Oh, hello, my non-American. I see it's that time of year again, when Americans celebrate their version of the World Cup, aka the Super Bowl. And aren't you curious about what makes the Super Bowl not just the biggest sporting event in America, but the single most watched television event in America, period? Why does a singular game captivate an entire nation that seems so divided at times? Well, that's what this video is all about. So once again, sit back, relax, let me be your cultural interpreter and explain what makes this yearly event the greatest spectacle in the States. And of course, I'll go into the two teams competing for the Vince Lombardi Trophy this year, give you a couple of European analogies, and by the end of this video, hopefully, you'll be able to explain to your friends down at the pub why Philadelphia Eagles fans will literally eat horse off the ground if they win. Yeah, that's not hyperbole. They actually did that. But welcome to a close European's guide to the Super Bowl, the always sunny in Philadelphia edition. Now, first off, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about just the awful calls that the refs made this past weekend. For those who missed it, there was a massive controversy with the refs because they got way too involved in both the games and especially in the Chiefs versus Bengals bout, seemingly all the fouls coming in favor of the Chiefs while simultaneously missing calls for the Bengals. And especially with a lot of these calls coming at the end of the game and ultimately determining who would move on to the Super Bowl, it just felt a little fishy. So much so, that there have been a couple of videos going viral claiming that the NFL is rigged. And I would just like to personally say that all these claims are just absurd. Think about it, okay? The NFL is a multi-billion dollar organization. They would have way too much to lose if the integrity of the game was ever questioned. There's absolutely zero reason the NFL would rig these games. And on a totally unrelated note, let me talk to you about today's sponsor and the NFL's newest sponsor, DraftKings. Nah, I'm not sponsored by DraftKings, but that would be, that would be amazing. If they would actually let me run that ad, oh god. But yeah, today's sponsor is actually SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app when it comes to sports, concerts, festivals, Broadway shows. Bro, I could even get Monday Night Raw tickets on here. I'm going to that. Yeah, pretty much any live event that you can imagine, SeatGeek is the all-in-one place to find the best prices. And they make finding a good deal so easy, even a clueless American can figure it out. And the system is super simple. The green dots means it's a good deal, and the red dots means you're an idiot. Don't buy it, dummy. Ooh, I can catch the Knicks and MSG for 69 bucks. Nice. And you know I got the hookup. Use the promo code BEMONEST and get $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Once again, that is $20 off your first purchase with the promo code BEMONEST. Go ahead and click on the link on the top of the doobly-doo. Thanks once again to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the show. So why is the Super Bowl the most watched event every year in America? Like clockwork. Well, the simple explanation is that it has a little something for everybody. For the men, obviously, they got the biggest sporting event of the year. For the ladies, they got the funny and cute animal commercials. And for the gays, they have Rihanna. Yes, Riri is coming out of lingerie retirement to play the Super Bowl halftime show this year. And I'm pretty excited. If you've watched any of these Fenty fashion shows on Amazon, yeah, my girls maybe watched a couple. But they're honestly, they're amazing. At the very least, all of them are visually striking. So yeah, I have high hopes for this year's halftime show. And yes, I hyped up last year's show, which featured Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. And it was all right. I admit it. I didn't know that 50 Cent was going to show up looking like a whole dollar hanging upside down. Good for him, but Rihanna is bound to put on a hell of a production. And don't act like she doesn't have a couple bangers you love. That Calvin Harris album, fire. And beyond having a little entertainment for everyone, the Super Bowl is just an excuse for Americans to gather together and do what we love most in this country. Eat and drink to the point of obesity. And come on, who doesn't want some of this spread? Look at this spread, brother. Mm -mm -mm. Just warms the cockles of my fat Asian heart. Just put those hot wings and beer in my mouth hole. Yo, pause! As for the game itself, for those who are new to American football, all you need to know is can the team on offense get the ball to this imaginary yellow line within four attempts, all right? And if they can do that, they get another four attempts. Think of it like build a play in your version of football. You try to progress the ball from your side of the field to the opposition side and eventually get into scoring range. And if they can get close enough to the opposition's goal, aka the end zone, they can either score a touchdown, which is essentially seven points, or kick a field goal for three points. Well, and everything else will be explained via replays. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the teams who will be contending for America's Champions League trophy this year. And kind of like the World Cup, it's it's pretty chalk. Yeah, the two top-ranked teams before the playoffs made it to the Super Bowl. And first, we'll start off with the easy sports analogy for my Europeans. And that is the QB for the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is the Lionel Messi of the NFL. And I don't mean old man Messi from current day. I mean Messi when he was young, when he was 25 and in the prime of his powers. Remember how bad of a man he was back then? When he was just a singular, unplayable deity on the pitch. And that is what Patrick Mahomes is to the NFL. Simply, he is the most talented player I've ever seen play the position. Tom Brady has more rings. He might be a better competitor, but I have never seen any player more naturally gifted than Patrick Mahomes. To win Messi 
lost Neymar at Barca. But Mahomes, if anything, stepped his game up to even another level and elevated the cast around him. And that has led to tying for the best record in the NFL with 14 wins and the number one seed in the AFC Conference. And to even get here, he had to defeat his only one real Achilles heel since coming into the league. The man they would call the Tiger King. Joe Burrow was 3-0 versus Mahomes before this Sunday, and pretty much he owned the Chiefs. So much so that the mayor of Cincinnati asked Joe Burrow to take a paternity test to confirm that he was in fact not Patrick Mahomes' father. Well, this weekend, Patrick Mahomes went on Mori Povich, and with a bit of help from the rest, confirmed that he was in fact not the father. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing as the mayor of Cincinnati talking shit on behalf of your football team? Shut the fuck up. You're not playing in the game. You're an asshole mayor who's spouting off like a drunk wife trying to get her husband into a fight at a bar. And you know what? You got your husband's ass kicked. After the game, the tight end of the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey, had this to say. Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. And now the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl, looking primed to win it all. Patrick Mahomes is the deadliest player on the planet. Their defense can get to the quarterback, and their head coach, who looks like Dr. Robotnik, is an evil genius when it comes up to drawing plays for his generationally talented quarterback. And at this point, who doesn't love Andy Reid? This man is such a fatty that this is what he said after the last Super Bowl he won. I'm gonna go get the biggest cheeseburger you've ever seen. <laughs> yep. So if the Chiefs win, you can guarantee that their head coach will be chomping down on the biggest cheeseburger he can find in Arizona. But if the Philadelphia Eagles win, I can guarantee that their fans will be chomping down on literal shit. And I can guarantee this because that's what they did last time they won a Super Bowl. Yes, none of this is satire. None of this is hyperbole. You heard it right. The first and only time Philadelphia has won a Super Bowl, a now notorious fan literally ate horse poop off the ground for no real reason. This man was possessed by so much joy of his city finally winning a sports championship that he ate horse manure off the ground. And you know what? I can guarantee there will be multiple fans who repeat this on social media if they win. So if you're neutral, root for Philadelphia. If for nothing else, to see the gang eat horse poop. And you know what? A few might even do it if they lose. Because what you need to understand about Philly fans is that they are the cesspool of NFL fandom. And more importantly, they're proud of it. They are perhaps the biggest fucking assholes in maybe all of American sports. And they wouldn't have it any other way. This is a fan base that not only booed Santa Claus, they threw batteries at him. And they've already started tearing the city apart, just making it to the Super Bowl. Can you imagine? I don't know if there'll be any of Philadelphia left if they win it or if they lose. Now, as for the team, well, the story of the season has been the transformation of their young quarterback, Jalen Hurts. His story should be an inspiration to all of us. From getting benched in the national championship game of college football to then being drafted as kind of an afterthought by the Eagles to now becoming one of the most electric weapons in the NFL and getting his name to the MVP conversation, well, that is a path that few could have predicted. This man has gone from Magikarp to Gyarados over the course of five years. Now, we always knew that he was an elite runner, but what's surprising is that his once scattershot arm has been honed into a scalpel. And he's been dicing up defenses all year long. Also, it doesn't hurt that they trade for one of the best young wide receivers in the game last year, A.J. Brown. And then you combine this high-octane offense with one of the best defenses in the league, and you have the best record and the number one seed in the NFC. And what a year it's been. You know the Eagles are good when a famous Philly cheese spot hasn't been shot up since the NFL season started. Look it up. Last time there was a shooting, it was before kickoff weekend. And they're just built on both sides with big uglies. Their offensive line is the best in the league, running over the number one ranked 49ers defense to get here. And on the defensive line, they nearly broke the single season sack record as a group. They bludgeoned the 49ers so hard that they broke the quarterback's arm on the first drive. They are the Monstars incarnate. I can see why Vegas has them as slight favorites. And in many ways, this kind of feels like France versus Argentina in the World Cup final. Philly being like France, just freaking loaded with talent at nearly every level. But like Argentina, Kansas City have that one X-Factor player, that one Avengers level threat that can render everything else pointless if he decides to take the game over. Will this be as epic as the World Cup final? I mean, what can be? But I would say on paper, it is a mouthwatering matchup. And even if the game turns out to be a dud, well, that's the true beauty of the Super Bowl because you still have dope commercials and Rihanna to look forward to. And that's gonna be my guide to the Super Bowl this year. I hope all you guys get to stuff your face full of beer and wings this next Sunday. And after the game, I'll be back with another video. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, go ahead, smush your nipple into the like button. Only takes you a second, but it helps me infinitely 
and this godforsaken algorithm. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Keep me alive and keeping these videos pumping out. And as always, until next time, America. <laughs>